So first, I kind of wanted to paint a picture of when this whole idea came up for you. Did you already have the idea before things with the uh, dark universe kind of went in a sour direction? Not at all. I mean, I was very aware of this character, obviously. He's a part of pop culture, but I had no desire to make an Invisible Man film. So then you come up with the idea immediately after that possibility went away? Did, did Yeah, you I mean, I just then? finished Upgrade, okay. and I was really happy with the way Upgrade turned out, and I kind of got bit by the action movie bug. I wanted to crash some cars, mm -hmm. blow some things up. Mm -hmm. And I went in for a meeting with, you know, some of the Blumhouse and Universal execs, and this character was bloated. It was like, well, what do you think about The Invisible Man? I was pretty mystified as to why we were talking about that character in particular. But immediately... I started thinking about these opportunities to, to modernize the character and make him scary uh, for a modern audience. Was there any hesitation after having so much success with Upgrade, your own original idea, jumping back into something that was, I, I guess, an adaptation or a new spin on an iconic character? Yeah, maybe for a second, but I realized that I could put my own spin on it. I could take this iconic, beloved character and wrap something around it that felt like my film. You kind of have to Jedi mind trick yourself into thinking that this is the first time an Invisible Man story has ever been told. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to think about all the other versions of this character that have gone before, whether it's TV shows, movies. I just want to forget all that and think, you know, how would this movie play if this was the first time this story was being told? So you know. what advice would you give someone else out there? Because we're bound to see not necessarily mm. another Invisible Man movie, but more of right. maybe even the Universal Monsters coming back to screen. What, would advise, what advice would you give for a writer and director jumping into that? <laughs> wow. Um, well, look, personally, in my own humble opinion, I think these characters have to get back to their roots. They were scary when they first came out. And I think that... A lot of these iconic monsters, Dracula, the Wolfman, they've become so ubiquitous in pop culture that it's drained all the power out of them. What I would want to do and or what I would want to see with characters like that is for them to become scary again. Like Dracula is supposed to be terrifying. You know, now I watch cartoons where he's voiced by Adam Sandler, right? It's, it's, more, of a, it's more of a cartoonish thing now, the cape and the voice. Um, I think, I think there is a way to make these characters scary again. That's why they've lasted so long in the popular imagination because they have these attributes about them that stick in our minds, you know. Um, and it's about stripping it back to that. You've got to strip it back to its core idea if you mm -hmm. want to make it scary. Success here, it was scary, got under my skin, and I took it with me, so thank you for that. Oh, uh, absolutely. A couple other questions for you. Spiral, do you have anything to do with that? No, uh, I uh, have not had anything to do with the Saw films for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm still friends with a lot of the people involved. Yeah. But I've really taken a back seat. It's a strange thing to sort of create a movie and then watch it go off into the wilderness without you. And Well, also with Chris Rock and Sam Jackson, what was your first reaction when you heard that's the direction the franchise was going? I'll tell you, I was on a location scout for this movie and I got a phone call from one of the guys at Lionsgate who's a friend of mine and... When he told me about Chris Rock, I thought back to a couple of years ago, I was at a film festival party at the Palm Springs Film Festival, and my agent, much to my horror, pushed me towards Chris Rock and was like, say hi to Chris. I think I said something lame like, I'm a big fan. <laughs> and he, he hears that 100 times a day, so he was like, okay. And as he was walking away, his agent said to him, that guy wrote Saw. And he like stopped in his tracks, came back and was like, you wrote Saw? And suddenly he was super interested. And he said to me, I would love to make a Saw film. And I thought it was just something that you say at a party, you know, like, hey, I'd love to dye my hair pink too. You just say it because the person's got pink hair. You don't want to make them feel bad. Turns out he was serious. That was not, that was not an offhand thing that he said. He really did want to make a Saw film. So that was the first thing I thought about when I heard the news was, wow, Chris Rock wasn't joking. I'm so excited about that. Uh, if I could squeeze in one more. Uh, we have a lot of Aquaman fans at mm -hmm. Collider, and I have been forced to ask this question. It's a burning question the team okay. has. What do you think your character does after two people jump out of his plane like that? What's the rest of his day like? <laughs> I, think, I think he lands the plane and assumes a different identity, different job, and he's just like, you know what? I've got a whole backstory for this cargo pilot that I don't want to reveal here, but I feel like a whole movie, this could spin off into its own universe. I think the cargo pilot is unexplored territory. Are you listening, James?